Revavroom, the multi-cylinder Pokemon. I always wondered how a car Pokemon would function, and this design is wonderful. The metal body is the real body, but it attaches itself to large rocks to create the rest of its body. It siphons minerals from boulders to create fuel, and then uses that fuel to move its new body. Its natural behavior draws an accurate parallel to a real engine. It moves from chassis to chassis, burning fuel for locomotion. The steel poison typing is a fitting choice. We're used to steel type being a typing used for anything inorganic or made of metals. Cars are primarily made out of steel, with the steel also being used in the protective frames of the car. When we design cars, there are many factors, but human safety is the most important one. Vehicles are massive, weighing at about 2.5 tons or 2.27 metric tons. When a vehicle crashes, it's usually into something moving at a different velocity, and all that force from the mass and velocity needs to be dispersed somewhere other than the people's bodies. Cars are designed with crumple zones and a safety cage, which work in tandem to protect the passengers. Crumple zones are meant to disperse as much energy from the crash as possible. They crumple, twist, bend, and deform away from the passengers to divert and waste all the excess crash force. The safety cage is the second line of defense meant to resist the leftover force and avoid crumpling into the passengers. Both of these components use steel in the frame as a sturdy, protective material. Now for the car enthusiasts who might be thinking about aluminum, yes, aluminum is lighter and stronger by weight than steel. However, the cost drives up the price, so it's mostly used in luxury cars where cost isn't too much of a concern for those customers. In the end, Revavroom is mostly an engine, and the engine can be made with parts that are steel, aluminum, or both. Overall, it's spot on as a steel type. Now as for the poison typing, air pollution, chemical waste, littering, intentional or not, corrosion, and noise pollution come to mind. Listen, I'm not sponsored by big oil, big gas, big plastic, or any of those initiatives. At the same time, I know there are people who have strong, financially motivated opinions about these topics. I'll ask you to remember that this is a silly Pokemon video on a gaming channel for good little Cams, Kims, and Karins. My goal is to bring people together with gaming content and convert entertainment into something that helps or teaches people. So let's be respectful, capiche? Subscribe if you want to help make that happen. Now let's get to the abilities. Reverroom has two abilities. Overcoat, its base ability, and Filter, the hidden ability. Overcoat is an ability that debuted back when us trainers battled in black and white. Wait, that's too far back. I meant Generation 5, black and white. The Overcoat ability originally protected the Pokemon from weather-based damage from sandstorms and hailstorms. Once Generation 6 came out, Overcoat was buffed to negate the effect of the Effect Spore ability, Powder moves, and Spore moves. Aside from the damaging hail being changed to the damageless snow, Overcoat hasn't had any changes to the current day. Overcoat as an ability makes sense because you wear an overcoat to protect yourself from the weather. A bit of fashion trivia for you. An overcoat is a long coat that usually goes past the knees, but a car coat is a shorter version that allows you to drive unimpeded. You can afford to use a shorter coat because you can take refuge from the weather in a car. Windows allow you to see while well protected, and most gaps have seams made to keep the elements out and the air conditioning in. This makes even more sense when you factor in the Japanese name for the overcoat ability. In Japanese, it's bojin, which means dustproof or dust tight. The seams in cars help to keep the weather, dust, and pollen out from the gaps between the windows and doors. The hidden ability filter also works thematically with Rev of Room using similar logic. A Pokemon with filter reduces damage taken from super effective moves by 25%. Vehicles usually have four filters. Air filters, cabin filters, oil filters, and fuel filters. The air filter keeps the air going into the engine free of bugs, water, pollen, dirt, and smog. The cabin air filter makes sure that passengers have good quality ventilation in the vehicle. Oil filters keep debris out of the oil so that the oil can maintain optimal lubrication in your vehicle. You should change this filter each time you change your oil. Fuel filters keep dirt, water, and other rubbish out of your engine and fuel injector. That's important since fuel from the refinery is clean, but stuff can get in there when transferred into trucks and gas stations. These filters exist to reduce the damage on your vehicle, its parts, and any living things in it. This definition applies to Revavroom using filter ability to protect itself. Okay, now we talk about the moves. They went all in and gave Revavroom a ton of car-related moves. Let's start with its signature move, Spin Out. 
Spinning out in a car is highly damaging, and it does slow you down since your tires can't grip the road for a while. Cars can shift gear automatically, or require you to do so manually. Cars exhaust smog and poison gas, which is why you should not run them in enclosed spaces. They can potentially leak sludge, shoot gunk shots, and acid sprays from bursted batteries. Tires can screech, engines can overheat, a rental car is a substitute, a car crash is both a giga impact and a heavy slam. Construction vehicles bulldoze, bad drivers may litter toxic spikes, taunt other drivers, rest at the wheel, or make scary faces to pedestrians. In The Fast and the Furious, like all of them, the movie usually has someone making a parting shot in it, but oddly there's one move that's missing from Reverum's moveset. A pretty odd move to be missing. You've probably asked this yourself. Why doesn't the car get U-turn? The Koma Koala can U-turn, but the car can't. What about the U-turning meteor? Picture a meteor falling towards the planet. Imagine if it just stopped and decided, nah, never mind, and left orbit. This is usually the part where I explain the Japanese name, but it doesn't change much this time. The Japanese name for U-turn is Tonbagaeri. Now because of the homophones in Japanese and the love of puns on the Pokemon design team, the move can be thought of as round trip, a sudden change in direction, or dragonfly return. These translations explain the looping nature of the attack and the bug typing. The end point is that there's no logical reason why Reverum should not get U-turn. 90 speed is a good enough speed to U-turn on some average speed threats. 90 speed is also low enough to use spin out and use the speed drop to get off a slow U-turn. It wouldn't be overpowered in standard play, but imagine the potential there of what could have been. You know, originally this was supposed to be a short video about how Reverum was missing U-turn. Then, I started realizing that Reverum is an amazingly designed car Pokémon that's missing U-turn. We've come full circle. Comment down below to let me know what Pokémon should get U-turn and what it would use U-turn to do. That's all I've got. Bye bye